If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Pull Down Store. They're having a Christmas gift promotion where you can apply for a Christmas gifts for someone else to be gifted code cards and other cool surprises. And they're having a bunch of discounts and sales on all the latest Pokemon code cards, as you can see right here. And when you're checking out, you can use Tailmon code for 5% off. If you're from Europe, MealyBotsGaming.com is a great option to get your cards from. They have all sorts of sealed products, merchandise, and all the sets available from Pokemon Sun and Moon upwards, including the latest Hidden Fate set. Don't forget to use Tailmon code when checking out to get a further 5% off from your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TG Worlds 2020. It's been a while, we've all been celebrating the holidays and stuff, so happy holidays to everyone. And sorry about my small absence, but you know, I'll be back with daily videos and hopefully today will be the start of that. Um, <clears throat> I mean, at the very least, January, we should have daily videos. Right now, December is always a slow month, um, content-wise, um, because of all the celebrations and whatnot. But today, I wanted to um, continue with our Dallas coverage and practice, I guess, with this um, Night March list that I was um, shown that has ADP and double dragon energies in order to try and get that little bit extra going against some decks and you do have AC to immediately remove the, <clears throat> the ADP from play which could be pretty important but that extra bonus 30 damage is very welcome along with choice fans and electro powers we might be able to hit the right number with Night March with this beautiful Joltik. This 30 HP Pokemon is actually a really big threat so yeah i'm looking forward to giving this a try we have the night march attack which does 20 damage for each night marcher in your discard pile so we have battle compressor to get rid of the lampants the pump hose and the joltics we also have martial gx to copy an attack from a basic pokemon in the discard pile aka a night marcher and we have the dene lele and shaman and oranger it's amazing the amount of basic pokemon support and basic pokemon draw that is available in expanded like in standard it's usually one pokemon sometimes two for a little bit like we had shaman and lele at some point in the same format but then we just had lele and then we had the dene and lele but now we just have the dene so there's always like a little bit of um, pokemon support this deck also isn't um, affected too much by defense it doesn't play red card doesn't play marshadow well it wouldn't play rather or rather it would normally but it's not like heavily affected by them so let's jump into the ladder and see what we can do with this deck let me know if the um if the music is too loud or not i feel like every time i check the videos i can not hear the music at all um maybe that's just me but i, I feel like um the music at this level might be a little bit more pleasant yeah, just a little bit more pleasant. And all right. Just sneezed. I'm glad I muted my mic for that. My mic, mic, mic. I don't know. All right. So let's call the coin flip. We do lose the coin flip, in fact. We're up against Aiden Caleb 0608. Um, not the best hand, not the worst. I definitely have to start the Marshadow. I mean, this does mean we're likely to get an attack of on turn one, as long as we find a, um, a DCE. Hmm. We're up against the Rowlet Executor, um, Vileplum deck, you would imagine. So the Vileplum on turn one is going to be very, very... Like, we don't have a way to bypass Vileplum, right? There's no stealthy hoods in the deck. Alright, so we see a turn one Stevens. 
The issue is just a single Vileplum completely shuts us down. That's the biggest issue. And there's no way in the deck around that, so maybe I should have something around that. Um, I definitely don't see myself KOing the Rowlet and Alolan Executor in turn one. I mean, it's possible, and maybe I should try and go for it. Like, how many Nightmare Triggers do I need? If I have all 12, so as long as I don't have any prized, this guy with a choice band might be able to do it. So we'll have to see. Maybe that's what I need to, maybe that's my win condition here. To hit for 270 damage on turn one, which requires all 12 Night Marchers plus a choice band. <clears throat> all right, so let's find out how many Night Marchers are prized. We have two, three Night Marchers prized, so I don't think we're getting that turn one KO, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're not getting that turn one KO. Um, because even Joltik, a single Joltik, that leaves one. That leaves eight Night Marchers. Eight times two, that's 160. Plus eight Choice Man, that's what? 190. Plus two Electro Powers, that's 250. So three Night Marchers price makes it literally impossible for us to pull this off. Okay, so at least I'm going to end, right? At the very least, I'm going to end away or try to end away my opponent's hand. That will indeed be the plan. Let's go ahead and get rid of another Lampent. Potentially a Pump Kaboo. And a... I guess an AD? Well, no, I feel like I should just go for maximum damage-ish. All right. So then... I feel like I should play a Dimension Valley. And then I will Ultra Ball these two cards <clears throat> for Shaman or for Ranguru or for Joltik. I feel like Joltik might be better. Uh, we also priced a Via Seeker, so that's not ideal. I'm just gonna go for Joltik. Not the biggest of fan of doing this, but maybe Shaman was actually better. That way I could settle for five and then, yep, in case exactly this happened. In case exactly this happened, in fact. All right. So no KO for us, right? No KO for us on turn one. Um, my opponent will simply stop the battle and we are going to be in so much trouble. Yeah, I have no way around that battle. I mean, that's always a question, right? Like how much should you actually tech for something like that? How popular will this be? Is it worth um, sacrificing consistency for it? That's always a question. <clears throat> okay, so a sign lab, a sign lab, a Bridget. Uh, getting rid of the Guzma was not ideal. I mean, the fact that we just completely halted our setup was just awful. Right, um, triple oddish makes a lot of sense. And yeah, I mean, I'll get three prizes, but as long as my opponent doesn't bench anything else, there's no way we can do this. So I'll probably just end up passing, I mean, conceding here to move on to the next game. Yeah, I'll just move on to the next game. There's no, there's no point, right? What could you possibly add? to beat Vileplum in this deck. Um, because like, even if I play a Stealthy Hood, right, which a lot of people tell me, oh, play Stealthy Hood, right? That's the obvious answer. Um, even if I played Stealthy Hood, I don't think that would be enough because they can just fab it away, right? They play four Fabas, so that definitely won't be enough. That definitely will not be enough, so... I don't know, it's it's complicated. Alright. Uh well, this might be a mirror match, honestly. We saw lightning, psychic, and metal from my opponent's part. So starter Rangaroo, that's never ideal. We do have the tackle, which gets us the turn one ADP. 
guarantees it even. It might be Pikram ish, maybe? <clears throat> See a nest ball. There's a Pikram. It is indeed Pikram. Alright. You see the Olivia on turn one. Those were two GXs. That's a really weird card to be playing. And that's also a really weird <coughs> Pokemon to drop on turn one. I mean, I guess I love it so common that you might need to do that often enough, but oh well. Okay, so then the question becomes, do I want to use ADP? Do I need to use ADP? If not, then I'll just thin it, right? <coughs> like, no matter what, I'm gonna thin it. Uh, losing these DCs, actually, like the two DCs, is actually not ideal. But I'm not gonna get end, probably. My opponent, we know my opponent's gonna play Volkner next turn. So yeah, I guess I have to. I think this is still okay to do. Um, I'm not gonna grab the stadium, I wanna save that, because I already have one in my hand. And I'll go boop, 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 and GX. It would be really awful to see a Pokemon Ranger from my opponent. But the fact that he already, she already played the Lily down means we don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> we see the Zeraora. An Acrobike. Another Acrobike. We see Raichu, we see Nest Ball. So, all the attack teams, right? Even if we lose the... Like, if we lose the... Um, the ADP here, it's not the biggest of deals. But I'd imagine we're probably not going to lose it. The issue is, I don't think I had another Floatstone. So I probably am going to lose the ADP, but that's fine. It's not the end of the world. I would still shouldn't know. Oh no, he should know. You have to lamp it right there. Alright, so unless I top deck a an ultra ball. My play is just to attack here, deal some damage. Um, that's scary. That is indeed scary. So do I just deal damage to this guy? Is that my play? Um, like, okay, she's gonna take four prizes, right? And then I just, I need to avoid benching any sort of GX here. Any sort of GX I need to avoid benching. All right, so let's get rid of that. Yeah, that, and then that. Not the Marsha. Like, the Marsha might be my late game play. Alright. And then I'll get rid of that. I guess I can just get rid of all the phone cables. Right? Well, you know what? I think I'm gonna get rid of this. Because, like, the teammates is gonna be the key card here. Now I'm gonna ultra wall away. These two for a Joltek. Well, actually, no. Oh, uh, this is gonna be so tough though. Okay, for a Punko, and then I wanna ultra wall for Joltek. Like, playing without GX is gonna be so tough, but I. 
I can't. If I want to win, then I can't. And then by benching this, maybe she'll go after this instead. Um, or this hand is good enough. This hand is actually good enough. As long as my opponent doesn't play Ranger, this hand is actually good enough. Back-to-back -back via Seekers should get me to win, 100%. No matter who my opponent decides to target. Um, this is annoying, that's for sure. Like the Sapto, sorry, that's annoying. It's not the end of the world, though. Hunter Mountain, that's fine. She's gonna go for the Attack Bolt, which is perfectly okay. Yep, goes after the Joltek, that's fine. That means I get to keep this for extra draw. She's down to four prizes, I mean two prizes, that's okay. I attack, I take four, and then I knock out anything else, and I win. So we're fine. We are fine. We are completely and utterly okay. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm just gonna get rid of... Like... Potentially useful cards. Alright, and then we go teammates. And the music is very fitting. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna grab a Joltek and I guess the Marsh Shadow? Well, no, I think two Joltics is simply better. Because I can bench down the two Joltics, and I did lose two DCs, but I do have access to the other two. So this is fine, and I do this, then I go Instruct. I need three Night Marchers in the discard pile, which I know I have. I'm gonna play this, just in case I get End to two, right? And then we go Retreat, and we go not Null. <laughs> we can Null because of the Thunder Mountain, but I want to Night March. For 210 damage. That means I have 9 Night Marchers in there plus the AEP effect. And now, like, worst case scenario is my opponent goes Pokemon Ranger and um, knocks me out, right? That means with Sapdos. So that means I can't win by knocking out the Sapdos. But if she goes Pokemon Ranger, then that means my hand is intact. Therefore, I can go via Seeker, Guzma, attach DC, and knock out the Lele. And that will be enough. So, that should be it, I believe. That should be it. Thunderous Assault, we get knocked out, that's completely okay. Don't even get end down to two. And now we're just gonna deal one million damage to that poor lightning weak Sapto. <laughs> 520, which is almost like one million damage. And there we go. Uh, pretty solid. So the deck flowed nicely, right? The deck flowed nicely. Um, the ADP setup in the beginning definitely helped. Um, we didn't lose the ADP immediately. And even if we had, I feel like it would have been fine. But yeah, that will be all for the Night March video. I know a little shorter, but um, that's what we have for today. Tomorrow, I'll probably be playing with Guardian for Expanded, although I am eager to give Rowlet, Eggs, and um, Pajero Control a try, even though I think it's much weaker now in Expanded. Who knows, right? Who knows? Maybe it still has a chance. So don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye! -bye.